Holy Spirit here with Bafa Channel. So nice to have you guys. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we have today Sister Bumi, the amazing Sister Bumi. Hello, hello everyone. <laughs> Thanks for having me, my sister. How are you doing? How 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 do you feel being on the session of this week? How do you feel? Well, well, I'm just um, giving all glory to God. I feel very okay, and I just thank God for His grace over our life, and also for your life, my dear sister. <laughs> I feel so honored. I feel so honored to have you here. Um, today, I know the last time we discussed, we discussed about motherhood, and today, what do you remember what we said we were going to discuss about today? Vulnerability, our ability to be so vulnerable. And um, I guess, and we were discussing about it the other time, and it comes in different forms. Um, sometimes we can be vulnerable when we are too overly kind and we don't know how to set boundaries. And life happens to us in ways that we are not prepared for. And um, vulnerability is like a, a very, very sensitive topic on this. Mm, there's so much to say about it. No one perfect way to go about it. Then I, I want to hear from you. So you can share your experience about what do you think about this thing called vulnerability? And um, what's your experience about it? Okay. Yeah, so thank you so much, my dear sis, for that question. For me, I mean, just like you said, vulnerability, you know, it's something that happens to each and every one of us because everyone has what they are going through in life. And that is a point where you are in life sometimes and you just, it's, so, it's difficult for you to share. And when you are blessed to have someone give you an information about themselves that is so personal to them, I think as a human being, you should treasure that moment. You should value that trust. That means the person has trust in you. Personally, I've gotten my fingers burnt a couple of times. When you share information, personal to you, your vulnerable moment with someone that takes it for granted or maybe goes to tell a third party or someone or, or uses that um, information that they have about you to maybe um, even make you more demoralized than you already feel. You understand? So I feel vulnerability is, is something that everyone goes through. And as a person, when you're vulnerable, you need to be able to access the person that you're going to share your information with. You need to ask your, yourself a question. Okay, is this person going to add value to me when I share this information with them? And you have to know the character of that person. I mean, some people, they are loud mouths. They, they can't help it. Like, they, they know how to do it. And sometimes... When they want to make themselves look good, they compare their situation with another person's situation. And it could just be you that they might want to use it as an example just to make themselves feel good because they feel that, oh, as my own situation is bad, it's not it's never bad. It's not as bad as this person's own. So they don't want to make themselves look good because of your situation. But if you know that this person is a trustworthy person and you feel that the person has the fear of God in them, and you know that this person has a good quality or a good advice that they can give you to make the situation better for you. I think you should share. Because one thing I believe is no man is an island. We can't do everything by ourselves. Even the, our God that we serve values relationships. So you have to have a relationship. You cannot keep everything to yourself. Because for you to get solutions, sometimes they, say, they always say um, a problem shared is a problem half solved. So you have to share, but you have to be careful with who you share with. Sometimes we might trust some people. You think you know this person and you tell this person this thing and the person might use it against you. It happens. We can't know anybody 100% and nobody is perfect. But in vulnerability, I think that you need to share, but you need to access who you are sharing the information you have with. 
So that's I think that's the way I think you can really balance that situation because you cannot be an island. You cannot keep yourself isolated because if you keep yourself isolated, it can lead to depression. It can lead, which will lead to so many other ailments. Oh, Mel says yes. So you think so? You 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 as a person, I think you need to share some things so that you can get help. And maybe if you don't have a friend that you can share with. Why don't you share with a professional? Because we have professional therapists, we have so many people, counselors. You can, but you, because in their own um, conduct of professional um, professionalism, I know they have you. You you're not, you they have this conduct of um, this code of conduct of maybe secrecy. Yeah. You cannot share my. I cannot share my client's information with another client or with. So if you don't maybe have people around you in your environment that you think that you can share mm -hmm. this information with, why don't you go to a, take it to a professional person to handle that situation for you? So that's what I, I want to say generally for vulnerability. But when we're talking about parenthood as well, I think dealing with children, they have a lot of times where they find themselves in a vulnerable state. And it is an it is an adult that they feel would not take that information for granted, or may would not make fun of them, or would not take it the other way around that they will look up to. Just like for example, there's some things that we go through as children. Like even when I was a child, mm -hmm. you know, you, you you go through a lot of things in school and everything, and you're thinking about, ah, can I share this information with my mom? I know that's what really causes a lot of um, secrecy between parents and children. Because as parents, you have to be intentional. Mm -hmm. you, you have to allow your children be able to walk up to you to say what is on their mind. You cannot be an extremely strict parent. That's a way you have to position yourself that your children can walk up to you and tell them what is bothering them. There's so much that goes on in their own peer groups, in, in their school. For example, a child that is being bullied in school, if you have a, a, an extremely busy parent and you feel that, ah, if I even share this information with my mom or my dad, they, they, they will not even take it seriously or they will just tell me they are busy as they always, that child will not come to you this next time to tell you anything. So at this point, we need to be intentional as parents and make yourself accessible to your children so that they can come and share because at that age, your children should think about you first when they, uh, they find themselves in some difficult situation. It shouldn't even be a third party. It shouldn't be a friend or some other. It should be you. So as an adult, you need to position yourself with a lot of integrity, a lot of respect. And you know, okay, my daughter, come. okay, what's going on with you? share with me and when they share this thing with you don't use it against them don't turn back and maybe um, turn the situation bigger than what it is because sometimes some parents present themselves as perfectionists when your children make mistakes you forget that once you were a child and you made the same mistake but then you make the child makes that mistake and you now make it seem as if you're the best human being you never made a mistake in your life and you now turn against that child as if what that child did is so out of this world and you never you never did it. So I think that is a that is a, a, a that's the point where I think as parents, when you're addressing vulnerability, especially in the in the in the in the lives of children, you need to listen, you need to be a good listener. And you need to know the kind of responses you give to that child that will not de demoralize that child, that will not make that child not want to come back to you the second time. Because believe me, any child that is secretive with their parents is secretive as a result of the fact that there was a time that child came to you and told you something and you did not address that matter well. That is why that child decides that, okay, from now on, I'm not going to tell my parent anything. I'm going to talk to my friend. I'm going to talk to an external person. We shouldn't be because we are responsible for the lives and the safety of our children. Your children should see you as 
as not, not yeah. say best friend, but I want I want to put a clause to that best friend because sometimes over familiarity causes a child to disrespect their parents. So if so even when so that is another level on its own. Exactly. Exactly. Your child can see you as a best friend, but you yeah. have to have boundaries. Of course. Because children are, I mean, they are they don't, they are still trying to build character. They are still, there's still a lot of trying. So if you make your children too friendly with you, it can lead to another level of disrespect but again you don't want them to be too scared of you so that they, when they're going through something they won't come and meet you oh. so you do you understand so basically let me pause here and allow you to ask questions i mean i was not i was not like i was not super prepared for this session but you no know, before we started we prayed about it and the way, if you notice when you were talking, I was smiling also because I said that because I had an experience this morning. So I have a younger sister that's like a six year old. She's very fiery sometimes. So separated for a very long time. And so I have not been on Facebook for almost a year. So I'm sharing this real life information just to kind of give a breakdown of what this topic is really about. And so I was like, okay, I want to go on Facebook. I just want to be on Facebook and see what's wrong. I was looking at my messages and I went to my sister's message and I told all the way from the very beginning when we were talking and I read to all the messages. I was my conversation was so mean. Mm. And I asked myself, if someone is communicating with me the way I was communicating with my sister, how would I have felt? And I told myself, I said, I would have felt really bad. I wouldn't want to go close to this kind of person. And personally, I was doing it out of a place of love, but because I lacked experience, I was not doing it well. Because I did not allow God to guide me on how to communicate with her. I was not doing it well. And do you know the, the, the negative effect this resulted in? I do not allow her to be vulnerable with me. I do not allow her to come freely open to share, you know, even the deepest, um, deepest, uh, and it got to a point where it was already too late because, you know, it gets to a point where once someone disconnects from you so long, it's very hard to bring them back. So the only thing I'm using to console myself is to pray for her. And then maybe God will touch her heart one day and she'll realize that this person was actually doing this from a place of love. No, right. you know? But then this person lacked the experience on how to do it. That is really like the focal point of what I'm learning from our discussion about vulnerability. <laughs> like you say, if you do not give that tie, that person, it, it does not even necessarily have to be you. It applies to relationship between a husband and a wife, mm -hmm. relationship between best friends, relationship between your colleagues, relationship between you and your customers. Allow people that God brings into your life to be vulnerable to you and to feel secured because it goes a long way to make them feel loved. I mean, there are some things that people might want to even commit suicide. Yes. People are going through sure. really very, very strong situations where they've lost hope in themselves. And it's like, man, I'm not going to do well. You know, I don't think because of everything that has happened, because of the wrong decisions I've taken, I don't know who to talk to. I wish I had somebody I can talk to. I mean, every one of us have been in that place where we wanted to really have someone we can confide in. And you are in the position be a person that somebody can confide in. So if somebody is vulnerable to you, it doesn't mean the person is weak. Exactly. The person has seen you as someone that is worthy. Worthy of sharing. Yes. Mm -hmm. For example, um, 
the, the, the word and the, the Bible in the book of Matthew. Jesus and his disciples. He was he had 12 disciples, right? Mm -hmm. But was he very close to every one of them? No. No. He was only close to like, I think like two, three of them. John, yes. Peter, and do you know, like, if that happened, I still one of the disciples that betrayed him. Sure. So it was he was vulnerable to that person. Mm -hmm. he, he allowed himself to be vulnerable to like but because the disciples did not value that vulnerability. Yeah. When somebody places something in your hand, if hmm. you value it, you would preserve it. Preser right. And when you preserve something, you preserve it with respect. True. Sure. And because he did not value it, because he did not respect it, he took that vulnerability and prayed it. I think that's hmm. what we are all going through in this part of the world. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It has happened, happened a lot of times between parents where you have a child. This child is battling with so many things. This child may be maybe one of the child that doesn't listen to you. You need to sit down as a parent and ask yourself, what am I doing that is making this child to be quiet next to me? Okay, what can I do to draw this child closer to me? I mean, thank you, thank you so much, Sister Bumi. I don't know how how I'm going so long in this conversation right now, but it, because of what happened to me this morning, I'm, I'm so excited inside of me to want to share. But then what did I do at the end? I picked up my phone and I sent sent and I sent a message to them. I read mm -hmm. all the messages. I think I did not know how to handle things. I was doing it from a place of love, but because I lacked a few things, my communication was not good. And I am so grateful. And that brings me to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like the fact that you really made emphasis on how parents can allow their children to be vulnerable, but then also set boundaries. Mm. After all, the, the Bible says, train up a child the way he should go. go um, right. When he grows up, he will not depart, not depart from it. From yes. Mm -hmm. Some of you that are listening to this session that you are not a Christian and never had a chance to read the Bible. Bible, I will tell you proudly, is one of the best ever diamonds, full of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so, and then when you said parents need to create, know when to set that boundary, that question now is because you know, some parents they've done all they can to train a child where they need to be, but then the child ends up becoming wayward. They, they're confused. They feel like, I've done everything that a parent needs to do. I've provided for this child. I've made this child to have a secured life. I've never made this child to have a, 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 a bad experience in terms of always there for this child. This is what I do. How can I, how can I fix this problem? Is that right or wrong? <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for that question, sis. So and, and even, I want to make a comment also before I answer the question about your experience with your sister. I mean, that was a very, very good thing you did by apologizing, by humbling yourself. Yeah. You realize where you were wrong and you humbled yourself. And that's a lot of that's something that a lot of people don't do. Yeah. They don't they, they even when they realize their mistake, they feel that they can just move on from it. They will even bother saying, I'm sorry to the person. They feel that, you, you understand? So what you did was a very good thing because all, all of us as human beings are not perfect. We will always make mistakes. We will always step on each other's toes. We always, but the ability for you to go back and apologize, humble yourself, it's a, it's a very big step. And kudos to you for doing that. And I know that definitely your relationship with your sister will be there. In fact, the fact that you apologize to her now, eh, she wants to be two times closer to you than she she was before because that is a very big step right there. It's not everybody that can apologize. That word, I am sorry, is so hard for a lot of people to say. But when you're able to say you break a lot of barriers and you, you mend relationships with that. Mm -hmm. 
So basically, when what? So back to your question now, talking about brand, just and you know, there was something else I wanted us to discuss as well. It was about the fact, and it's related to the question you just asked now. You know, in the last session that we had, we talked about how we have to be intentional as parents, raise your child in the way of the Lord, and the foundation of the child is very important. And you need to really invest in that foundation so that you can have a good outcome as an adult in the future for your child. So basically, I know life happens. Life happens. You see, a lot of us, in our, in our minds, when you reflect, you feel that I did everything right. Where did I go wrong? And this turned out to happen like this. It happens to a lot of, we, we try to be intentional, we plan our lives, we try to do things the right way. You think you have put in all you have, you've got like, because as, as human beings, we, we try, we can only do our best. We can only give what we have. So you did all this and still it didn't, the outcome, I mean, there's, there's, there's room for redemption because when you think about it again, Apart from the influences that a child faces at home, they also have external factors, My external God. influences. Very true. Exactly. So, so many things might have also ha happened in the life of the child, even outside, that you know, no, maybe my, just make that child. But, you know, and I will never overemphasize, though, mm -hmm. the foundation you lay for your child. And when you follow the word of God, which I follow, training up the child in the way of the Lord, trust me, no matter how much that child derails, the spirit of God will bring that child back. Don't give up. Just keep praying for your child. You gave it all you, you could. You did all you did. You, you did all you could. You put in your best. But it still don't give up on that child because God will not give up on that child if you have laid a good foundation for that child while the child was growing up. So going back also to, to boundaries. Yes, as, as parents, we want our children to see us as accessible okay. and come to me. But sometimes we, as parents, sometimes we can overdo it. And it, it depends on the parents. Some parents overdo it and some parents underdo it. Mean, meaning that they become too harsh and too strict and the child cannot even come to them. As a parent, I think we need to balance these things and you need to be intentional. Just think about the story of um, Jacob and Esau in the Bible. Rebecca was their mother, right? Mm -hmm. She was something in her own style because in my life I've tried to compare styles of um, parenthood in the bible as well because what did this person do right and and that's another thing we as parents we can do you cannot know it all you need to look at examples in your environment look at parents that kind of did it right and the ones made that made mistakes so that you can know the mistakes you couldn't make in her in your in your own parenthood in the case of Rebecca she was she had this preferential treatment in her in the lives of her kids she had twins that came out of her womb the same time, like, like almost the same time, that grew up together in her womb. And yet she loved one more than she loved the other. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you, you understand? Yes, yes. It's, it's tempting when you want to compare your children and you want to see this child as the angel and you want to see another child as, mm, like, you understand? Maybe, you're, <laughs> exactly. So it's like, no, we need yeah. to resist such temptation. Don't give up on any child. The child is not acting right right now. Trust me, with prayer and intentionality and doing what you have to do, that child will change. So don't give up on any child. Don't compare your children. <laughs> but, <laughs> to just say this part as well Nothing. that's something else that also causes a child not to like it affects the psychology of that child a child that knows that mommy loves this child more than me you understand so you feel that you're giving your children all you've got to give but this little little we see that little things as parents we need to check ourselves once in a while 
You need to check your mind. You are, what am I doing wrong? So, you know, you, as a parent, you don't know you have hurt the feeling of this child preferring his elder brother or his younger brother or el your elder sister more than him, saying, ah, if it was this, if it was John, John wouldn't have done this. John is getting A's in all his papers. What are you doing? Oh so words, the words that you even speak into your children can affect them in future. The things that we say and we think that doesn't really mean anything. Like I just say it out of the blue. Exactly. So when you think about it and think about maybe you did all you could and a child still turned out somewhere. Have you examined yourself? Because there's power in words. So, and you know, words, it sticks. When someone, when you say something to someone, that thing, and especially when it hurts that person's feeling, it sticks longer in the person you said it, head, than you that said it. You that said it probably will just say it and forget that you ever said something like that. But the person that receives that message will not forget it. And you don't know how that person's psychology or how that person will start reacting oh. mentally to that message. <laughs> You understand? So those are the things we need to examine. As human beings, we're not perfect. We're just trying to be perfect. We're trying all we can. Well, there are little, little things, little details I think we need to examine in ourselves that will, and if you're able, just like my sister Abiba, able to call yourself back yes. and apologize. Humble yourself even before your children. Don't be too big to say, I'm sorry to your child. I'm also talking to myself. So let people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like, I like, I like the transparency in the conversation. So we shouldn't be too um, big to apologize, to humble ourselves, no matter what. When you have re retraced your steps, when you have realized your mistake, don't be too big to say, I'm sorry. Or because we're not perfect, but when you make a, um, a move like saying you are sorry, you can, we are quite, gradually kind of trying to transform yourself to be a better person. Yeah, my God. You said like, you said exactly everything and you just spoke on point. I just want to give God the glory. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if, the, if the person is a two-year-old baby or, or maybe an animal. Let's just say what does he talking about human beings mm -hmm. An animal, because some people are very, very healthy with their animals. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter what, as long as that person, that thing has breath. Do put yourself in the situation. How would I feel if I'm to do this? I know we all have our journey journey, we've had experience, we've seen a lot of things, things that have affected our relationship with people in the past, but we are yet to gain because we do not allow ourselves to stay down in that negative um, part of our journey. And I mean, that is something so honorable. And thank you so much. Thank you for accepting to pray with me. And I pray that the Lord will give you a particular um, salvation prayer that people always pray. But as the Lord placed it in my heart, and that's how I do it. I want to congratulate you. Welcome Beautiful to the family of God. You have an opportunity to go online, order a Bible. Give it a try. Don't don't push yourself too much and take your time. Study it as you go. Pray that God will guide you. And for Amen. those of you that are going to Life Church Ministry, please look at this number. Call this number on the screen. Speak for help. So um, thank you everyone for joining us today. My on this my sister's beautiful platform and. <laughs> Thank you, my sister, for this opportunity. I don't take it for granted. So basically, as parents, I know that we're trying our best. And also some parents are single parents. Life happens. We know. Some are even married. And maybe you are the only one having that responsibility of really handling the kids. Maybe your, other, your spouse is not really responsible enough. You're trying. You're giving it all you can. But I think what the, the key here is just... Being intentional, intentional parenting. And also, I, I, one thing I believe is it also takes a village to raise a child. And that's another thing we're going to discuss another time. Really, because you, 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 you're just one human being. You can't do it all. 
But then we're going to talk about how you can ask for help. And that's also come when it comes to vulnerability. Some people have been so hot, they don't even want to ask for help. And they know that they need help regarding raising your children or even helping out in your home or so many things. So, but um, thank you so much. And I'm just going to pray for everyone on this platform that God will bless you all and the wisdom, knowledge, understanding that you need to be the, 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 the good parents that you want to be or the good human being that you want to be. For paradventure, you are someone that has hurt people in the past when they were vulnerable to you. You took their information for granted. There's restitution. Ask for forgiveness. And I, and I just ask God that God would forgive each and every one of us and have mercy on us. As human beings, we fall every day. Lord, I... We ask you, O oh God, that you cleanse our heart of all unrighteousness, O oh God, and bless everyone, O oh God, on this platform, O oh God. Grant us our heart desires. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. <laughs> I don't know what happened to our volume, sis. <laughs> <laughs>